Hello and welcome back to uh, another lesson of our Fundamentals of the Faith. Uh, this week we're in uh, 11, Lesson 11, and uh, that's Evangelism uh, and the Believer. Um, so what is, what is evangelism and uh, how does that apply to us uh, what are <clears throat> what are some of the things that, that keep us from evangelizing from witnessing uh, we should we should always be you know want to share the gospel uh, want to share the good news which is what the gospel means um, but we don't, do we, like we probably should. Um, you know, we want to leave that to the, to the preacher or to the missionaries uh, because we may have a fear. Uh, you fear people. Uh, you, you're intimidated. You don't want to say something wrong. Maybe um, forget a scripture or something. But... Uh, a host of reasons, I, I suppose, um, but you know, to the to the unbeliever, um, the gospel is foolishness. Uh, Christianity is is foolishness. So we need to be motivated, and we need a heart for the lost, um, the same that, that Jesus had, and and Paul had that heart for the lost. But let's look. First of all, in, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 13 and 14, the, the gate, uh, Jesus, this is Jesus talking. He says, go in through the narrow gate, for the gate that leads to destruction is wide and the road is broad and many travel it. But it's it's narrow gate. It is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Uh, so, if there's only a few that find the road that leads to life, then we need to uh, we need to try to get as many people saved as we can. Um, we need to think about uh, your your neighbors, your family, friends, people, co-workers. Uh, do you share the gospel with them? Um, I know my co-workers, most of them are Christian, go to church, but uh, there are situations where you encounter those people. So we need to develop a love for the lost. Uh, you know, Jesus in Luke uh, 19, Luke 19 and verse 10, uh, Jesus says, after he's, uh, his encounter with Zacchaeus, uh, for the Son of Man came to seek and save uh, what was lost. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Uh, and he wept. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. In uh, chapter nine, Luke chapter nineteen, uh, verse forty-one, uh, he's coming in. This is when he comes in as uh, as king, and their their uh, the disciples and the people. He comes down from the Mount of Olives, and they're singing praises. And Pharisees said. Uh, rebuke your disciples uh, and Jesus says I tell you if they keep quiet the stones will cry out and when he approached Jerusalem when he saw Jerusalem uh, he saw the city he wept over it and he says if you only knew today what's needed for peace uh, so, so Jesus had compassion obviously uh, and then Paul in, in 2 Corinthians uh, 
12 and 15, Paul says, uh, as for me, I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and expend myself as well. Uh, he was talking about uh, not being a burden to the Corinthians <clears throat> and not wanting them to spend any of their money. But then he says, I've, I'll spend everything I have in myself as well uh, you know, for your salvation, for y'all, you know, to, to have eternal life. So if Jesus had a heart for the lost and, and, and Paul did, you know, these, these guys are our examples, right? Um, so we're also in, uh, in the, Gospels in each of the Gospels, uh, we are commanded to evangelize, and that that calling is repeated at the end of all four Gospels, and at the end of uh, or in the beginning of Acts, when Jesus uh, right before he his last words on earth uh, was about that uh, in Mark sixteen. And verse 15, go into all the world and uh, preach to all creation. Uh, in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, go make disciples, baptize them, and teach them. Luke 24, 46 and 47, uh, repentance was proclaimed to all nations. Acts 22 and 15, Paul would be a witness for Christ to all men. Uh, so we're... We are uh, commanded, okay, to to witness, right? And also, the gospel, this good news, is uh, it's entrusted to us um, in First Thessalonians chapter two, uh, chapter two and verse four. Uh, since God has tested us and found us fit to be entrusted with good news, this is how we speak. So Paul says we, we've been entrusted with the good news, with the gospel. Uh, also in, in Titus, in Titus chapter 1, uh, Paul says that uh, uh, which now at his appointed season he has brought to light this is his uh, uh, introduction to Titus uh, brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior so we're entrusted with the gospel um <clears throat> So what does that mean to have the gospel entrusted to you? Um, well, it means to, to me, for me, I think it means that uh, we need to do what it says. So when it's when we're commanded uh, to witness, and um, I mean, how else are people going to know anyway, right? Uh, God puts it. We've already seen that uh, in. We've talked about in our class, in this class, and Brother Josh's class, uh, we've wore out that scripture in Romans about uh, about God being revealed through nature and different and different things besides preaching. Um, so it's commanded to evangelize. So that's what we need to do. There is um, <clears throat> there is good news. Okay, this this message. Okay. Good news of, of evangelism. Um, what do you, does people need to understand um, to be saved? Or they don't, do, do the people have to know the Bible before they're saved? Of course not. Um, 
they don't have to understand every nuance and every every little detail uh, but at a minimum uh, people have to see themselves as sinful uh, before a holy God uh, and understand that they're, they're in the need of a savior and uh, and that Jesus Christ is the only way uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 3 and 4 Paul preached that good news uh, that Christ died for our sins he was buried and after three days he was raised again um, so that is the good news and then there's the the basics okay of uh, of evangelism just basic things that people need to know uh, <clears throat> So that would be the uh, you know the essentials. Uh, what so what does a person need to believe about Jesus to be saved? And um, John one one, Jesus is God. Uh, John fourteen six, Jesus is the way, truth, and the life, and the only way to God. Acts four twelve. Jesus, the only way to salvation. Um, and then, as far as your evangelism goes, these are these scriptures in Romans and Peter, John, you know, key verses for evangelism that, that, that you should know, be able to, to at least find Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fallen short. And I'm paraphrasing, okay? Uh, Romans 6 23 the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life Romans 5 8 while we were yet sinners Christ died for us first Peter 2 and 24 he bore our sins so we died to sin and lived to righteousness by his wounds we are healed Romans 10 9 if you if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord believe in your heart that God raised him, you're saved. That's pretty clear, isn't it? John 1, 12. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those <clears throat> who believe in his name. So there's a few scriptures that spells it out very simply, and there's nothing to it. Uh, so that's just the that's just the basics right there. So what then uh, keeps us from doing that? What's, what's our hindrances? Uh, I, I spoke already about that. Why do we hesitate sometimes? Um, I know for me is uh, I... I don't want to say the wrong, give the wrong scripture. Say this is um, this is what you ought to believe, and it not be the the right um, book and verse and all that. Uh, which so which means I would need to study more, right, and uh, memorize those verses. It's just a few of them. It's not like it's that hard, right? Um, but we shouldn't be intimidated or, or feel or, or feel peer pressure. Uh, when you look at Romans, let's look at Romans chapter 1. Um, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, since it is God's powerful means of bringing salvation to everyone who believes. Um, memorize that one. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Um, in Acts, let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Uh, after Peter and John had been arrested and let go, they, they go back to their group and they, and they start praying. 
and they pray for boldness. Um, you would think that the guys that were with Jesus for three years and saw his miracles would have all the boldness that they needed, but I guess when you're um, being arrested and you think you may get the same thing that Jesus did, you need... Uh, but anyway, verse 29, chapter 4. Now, Lord, consider their hearts and, and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. So they, they pray for boldness. And so if the apostles did it, we should too. Uh, and we need to know, and which I've already said, uh, for me, you need to know the message. And that brings us to our, to our memory verse, which is 1 Peter 3.15. Uh, <clears throat> always be prepared. Uh, be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And do this with uh, gentleness and respect. I'll read that again. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason, the reason for the hope that you have. So we have that hope, eternal life, and so there it is. We should be uh, prepared to share that, and we do it with gentleness and respect. Um, but also you need to remember that it's God that converts men, right? The Holy Spirit that convicts them, draws them, uh, not you, not, not the messenger. Uh, it's our job to give the message, to deliver it. And, but it's not our job to do the convicting and, and so that's where the, uh, gentleness and respect you start hammering people uh, it's not your job to to make them feel bad for living the way they do uh, Holy Spirit to take care of that right uh, so we need to get over that and uh, you know those things that, that hinder us uh, so that brings us to uh, our strategy. Uh, what? Uh, how, how do we go about uh, witnessing? Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. This is the one that uh, when you were a kid, you so in, in Sunday school and uh, VBS, you probably learned this song. Uh, but how how do you witness? One of the one of the best ways to witness is by your life. And listen to this, Matthew five fourteen. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp, put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on the stand and give its light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So we live in such a way to let our light shine and, and to glorify God, right? For the glory and the praise of God in heaven. Uh, in Philippians, let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Verse 14. Uh, actually, let me read uh, verse 27 first, uh, chapter 1. 
Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Uh, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Um, so Paul is saying, conduct yourself. And then when, when we turn the page, go to chapter 2, uh, verse 14. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God without defect in the midst of a twisted and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the sky as you hold on to the word of life. So, We are living, we should live blameless and pure amongst this crooked generation, warped, so that we shine. We will shine like stars in the sky while we hold on firmly to the word of life. Uh, so there's a good command there for us to, to, to live right. Um, so that'll make you stop and think, won't it? The, the people that don't even know you, and they see you uh, at the grocery store or wherever out, you know, in life, do they know you're a Christian? Can they tell by the way you act? Um, and so that that's a witness. Um, <clears throat> we should be praying. Um, Paul prayed for the salvation of Israel in uh, Romans 10 uh, and Colossians chapter 4 um, let's see what Paul says chapter 4 verse 2 keep persisting in prayer stay alert be thankful include prayer for us too that God may open a door for us to proclaim the message about the uh, about the mysteries of Christ, about the secrets of Messiah. For that is why I'm in prison. And I pray that I may speak as I should in a way that makes the message clear. And and then let your let your conversations be gracious, interesting, so that you know how to respond to uh, seasoned with salt so that you can know how to respond, how to answer everyone. Um, so we should be praying and, and praying for each other. Uh, not just pray for ourselves to be able to witness, but pray for, for each other. Um, ask for confidence. Um, Oh, let me go back. Yeah, we can ask for confidence. Go ahead and do that. Acts 4.29 for boldness. Um, now, Lord, consider that oh, I just already read this. We're going to pray for boldness. Um, so we pray for boldness for uh, for our conversation to be seasoned with salt our light to shine. Uh, and when the doors open, we can we can give, proclaim the mysteries of Christ. And, and then also, let's look at Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter one. Let's see if I can find that. I didn't. This is a good one too. Chapter one and verse verse eighteen. Uh, Paul is uh, he's praying and he says, "I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you 
may know the hope to which he's called you. So open the eyes of people's heart. Open the eyes of our heart. We sing a song about that. Um, and we need to use uh, we need to use God's word. Uh, I just said, you know, at the beginning, we should be, we should know those verses that that speak about uh, salvation and, and how to be saved. Um, but in Hebrews chapter four, God's word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and mar marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Uh, and in Acts chapter 17, Paul, um, he reasons with them from the scriptures, explaining and giving evidence. And 2 Timothy, scripture uh, gives you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, so use the word. Uh, don't make stuff up. We're gonna we're gonna live right so our light so that our light shines. We're gonna pray for opportunities for doors to be open. Pray that people's the eyes or the heart is open. We're going to let God, we're going to let the Holy Spirit um, convict people. We're not going to hit them over the head with our Bibles or with our commentaries. <laughs> uh, and then pray and uh, pray for each other that we're not intimidated, we're not nervous or uh scared, whatever you want to call it, about witnessing. And uh, so pray about those things because if, if we don't do it, we're the ones that's out in the world, right? Uh, preacher's not, he preaches to us, he builds us up so that we can build the body up. And... Uh, we go out into the community, into our communities and our families, and um, we use God's word, and hopefully the Spirit will, well, not hopefully, the Spirit will convict them, and uh, so that's what we should be praying for. This is a, this is a good, good lesson. Uh, so that takes us to lesson 12. I still think that that eventually, before this is over, we've only got two lessons left. We may finish finish this off together. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, lesson twelve is obedience. Uh, but again, if you have questions or comments, want to talk about it, call and. Uh, Get in touch with us. We're glad to, to share with you one on one. So, Lord bless, and we'll see you hopefully real soon. God bless.